Welcome back to Stay Sprung, and today I'm going to do this a bit different. While I usually cover the model and specs first, this video will detail a very special accent to the watch. As you may have noticed by now, I'm referring to the Rolex Datejust. This is a 36mm with 18 karat white gold hands as well as applied Roman numerals. The unique part for me is the beautifully crafted anniversary or better known as the Jubilee dial. Going back some odd 75 years, Rolex celebrated its 40th birthday in 1945 with the release of the Datejust accompanied by the 5 link semicircle bracelet exclusive to only the Datejust, hence the Jubilee bracelet was born. 40 years into the future, to commemorate Rolex turning 80 and the date just turning 40, the Jubilee dial was released in 1985. Iconic to that era, the Jubilee design is a monogram repetitive Rolex pattern which covers the entire dial. Ironically, this dial doesn't have the excessive print such as the COSC Swiss certification at 6 o'clock, usually standard for Rolex. Although previous Jubilee dials did display that print, this makes simply reads Rolex, date just, and Swiss made, which is really clean. The face appears to have an iridescent finish, and this is due to the raised elements in the dial. The pattern consists of a matte base and a sunburst top. While the plane between the two elements is very shallow, it's still effective in allowing the Jubilee design to appear subtle and even non-apparent in certain lighting. And at other times, direct light usually, the repeating Rolex literally jumps out of the dial at you with its metallic flake and sunburst upper layer. If you look closely as the light moves across the watch, it refracts light in a similar manner as the sunburst finish dial. And that's because it starts out as a sunburst dial and then is engraved to create these different planes and textures in its surface. Surely one of my favorite dials and not solely pertaining to Rolex brand, but in general. The design adds an extra pop, continuously changing depending on lighting and viewing angles. The dial is in a 116234 36mm super case, which is one of many upgrades from my previous 16234. 11.6 millimeters thick, which stands much broader than the 1.6 models, but it's still slimmer. Lug to lug width of 44.4 or 45.7, including the end links, which are solid unlike the 1.6. The Super Jubilee bracelet has solid inner links now. Still polished inner three links and the outer are brushed with solid sides in the same fashion, but the 1.16 also has the crown clasp or also referred to as the enclosed clasp. There is only a crown that breaks the otherwise seamless bracelet. Gently pulling up on the crown, which has its own pivoting lock, releases the solid steel deployment clasp, yet another enhancement over the previous pressed steel clasps. The crown clasp is no longer offered by Rolex, which is a shame, but makes the 116 more collectible. I went with the 18 karat fluted bezel, of course, the perfect marriage between the bezel and the bracelet. In conclusion, all the upgrades from the solid inner and end links, super case and bracelet, to the crown clasps and solid steel deployment, and even the little details, such as the engraving of the inner riad of the dial, with Rolex and the crown at 12 o'clock. In addition to the internal upgrades, bi-directional winding, jeweled staff with Teflon reversing wheels, full balance bridge with a free sprung index for shock deviation, which can be adjusted in five positions, plus a handmade brigade over coil handspring for gravity deviations, the 116234 is a very clean piece, and although I'm very fond of a good 16234, in my opinion this is the piece to have. The Jubilee dial can't really be defined by words, but rather viewed as a piece of art that appears different to everyone viewing, which I believe Rolex set out to accomplish, and indeed they have. If you like the content, hit the thumbs up button. Comment with your thoughts below on the 116234 date just by Rolex. Please subscribe, and oh yeah, stay sprung.